This is May 9th, 2018, a little over a week after Fedora 28 was released, and I finally have the default Wayland version and the optional XORG version installed on separate external drives. If you saw my earlier videos, this one made on May 2nd, you know that I was having a lot of trouble with bugs, both in the installer and in the installed systems. And when I made this one on May 8th, I was able to get it to work, but I wasn't sure exactly what the difference was. One thing that did not change was the downloaded ISO image. I was able to install it on May 8th with the ISO image that didn't work on May 2nd. So what was the difference? Well, one difference was the way I wrote the ISO to a flash drive. The first time on May 2nd, I was using Fedora 27, which was using a faulty Linux kernel version 16.5 at the time. The second time on May 8th, I used the same ISO image, but I wrote it to the flash drive using Ubuntu Mate 18.04, which uses kernel version 15.0. So that's one difference. The other is probably that the updates from the Fedora project changed over that week. Make sure you use the current updates and keep it updated, whichever version you install. However, I find that the Wayland version is still buggy and bloated, and I recommend not wasting your time with it. It may be of interest to developers, but it does nothing for the average user. Here I'm going to show how to go directly to the XORG version. All right, you have an option here of test this media and start Fedora, or if you move up with your up arrow to start Fedora Workstation Live 28. These both started in Wayland mode, and it uses far too much of my meager resources for me to make a screen recording. I have been able to get it to work without screen recording. However, I can't show you that, so I'm going down to troubleshooting here. I'm going to click on Enter, and then I'm going to select the default, which is Start Fedora Workstation Live 28 in Basic Graphics mode. This leads you to an XORG session, which I can record with a simple screen recorder. Click on Enter. Now I'm going to edit out any long pauses or long series of unintelligible instructions and just cut to the most important parts. But I will show you some of what is going on. When you get to this login screen, all you have to do is press enter at this point. It will let you go around it. Once you've installed it, that's a different question, of course. I have the option to try Fedora or to install the hard drive. I usually try it first so I can connect to the internet at my leisure. Uh, however, uh, since I'm using a virtual machine, I'm already connected through my host machine, and this shows up as a wired connection, although it's actually wireless to the host machine. However, there's no point in going through that now since this wouldn't show the actual case. So I'm going to click on Install to Hard Drive. Now this is going to move somewhat slower than usual because, again, I'm running a virtual machine and simple screen recording, so resources are really stretched on my machine. This is the installation language, English, English United States. Continue. It asks for an installation destination, and it's selected Automatic Partitioning. I'm going to click on this anyway. I only have one choice here, and that's my virtual hard disk. In reality, I would have the choice of my internal drive or any external drives I had connected, and they would all show up here. 
Now, I could use automatic partitioning with no trouble at all, but I'm going to select advanced custom partitioning because that's what I usually use. Let me also say that I usually go down here and click on full disk summary and bootloader. And normally it automatically puts the bootloader on the device I've selected. But being somewhat cautious, I usually click on set as boot device anyway. As you can see, it's already checked here, so that doesn't really change anything. So I close that. Now I've already selected advanced custom partitioning, and that's with the Blivet GUI, which Fedora's had for a few past releases. And then whatever you've selected, click on Done. Now in my case, it takes me to this Advanced Custom Partitioner. I've only got 26.4 gigabytes allocated, so I'm going to select about 24 of those for my main partition, which has already been selected as EXT4. And of course, I could change that. I don't need to give it a label. I'm going to give it a mount point at forward slash, which is root. And then click on OK. Now I'm going to go over here to the free space. Click on plus again. And that gives me a new partition. I've only got 2,452 megabytes left, so I'll use the whole thing. But down here, where it says file system, I'll select swap. It doesn't need a label. I'm certainly not going to encrypt it. And then click on OK. So now this is the partitioning that I've chosen. And I could have chosen something similar to this on my internal disk or my external drive. So I'm going to click on done. Now it gives me a summary of changes. I'm going to destroy the existing format, which actually was unknown since it was just a fresh virtual disk. It actually destroyed it twice. I don't quite know why that is. Anyway, I, it created a new partition table in MS-DOS format, which I normally would have done myself. It created a device on SDA1, and it formatted that as the XT4. Then it created a partition, another device on SDA2, and it formatted that as swap. Now I'm going to click on Accept Changes. Now I'm going to click on Begin Installation. Now here's where things are different from a normal Anaconda installation on Fedora. At this point, you'd normally be invited to select a root password and to select a user. In this version of Fedora, that will be done as you first log in to the newly installed system. So there's no choice for that here. Now what I found is if you use the net install, there's still a choice to select the root password and the user at this point. And if you use one of the Fedora spins, such as XFCE or one of the others, I believe in most or all of those, you'll also still have a choice, as you've always had, to select the root password and a user at this point. But in the GNOME configuration, which is default for Fedora, and this is GNOME 3.28. And this is just with Fedora at this point. You'll do that later. So now it's installing the software, and I'm going to pause till it's finished. So now installation is complete. It says Fedora is now successfully installed and ready to use. Go ahead and reboot to start using it. Uh, I'm going to click on quit. This does not actually reboot. It just quits the installation.
But now I'm going to go up here to this system menu, click anywhere here, and I'm going to go to shutdown. Now I'm going to go to power off. I could restart, but power off gives me more time to fiddle with the virtual machine. This is booting from the newly installed system. You may not have caught a glimpse of it, but it was using Linux kernel 4.16.3. That's going to be updated. Now you notice there was no login at this point. This is only on the first boot after installation. Once you've logged in, it doesn't repeat this. Bienvenido, etc. Welcome. I'm going to click on Next. Privacy, Location Services. Allows applications to determine your geographical location. Automatic problem reporting. Uh, if you're concerned about this, you can turn these off. But uh, with all the glitches I have encountered in Fedora 28 so far, I think automatic problem reporting is a good thing to leave on. I'm not going to connect to my online accounts, so I'm going to skip this. Now you have to log in. Now this would normally have been done during installation. This is new. So be careful what you do here. Remember your password. It says in very small gray letters, this will be used to name your home folder and can't be changed. So be careful what you're doing. All right, now click on Next. Now again, in small gray letters, Mix uppercase and lowercase and try to use a number or two. It says up here in easier to read letters, be careful not to lose your password. Next. Now you're ready to go. Start using Fedora. Now you have the normal GNOME help, which shows up when you first start in Fedora, but you can get it in Ubuntu if you go to help. I'm going to skip this. Normally if you wait long enough, you're going to be invited to update. There are no notifications yet. I'm going to go to GNOME Software. And I'm going to go to Updates. It says the software is up to date. This is running a bit slow since it's in a virtual machine and I'm also using Simple Screen Recorder. Normally you'll be invited to update as soon as you enter this installation. However, I'm going to force an update. Things are going very slow. Pseudo DNF update.
Now you know the sudo operates much as it does in Ubuntu. It no longer requires you to sign in as root. This is because sudo is much better from a security standpoint. Running a system in root is dangerous. I'm going to maximize this. Now these updates are critical, so if you're not asked to do them, do them anyway. You notice here, I now have this notification at the top. Software updates are available. Important OS applications updates are ready to be installed. It's a little late for them to get into that. I've already started the process here in the terminal, and I, I think the fact that both of these utilities are trying to do the same thing is causing a bit of a problem, but let me let my process continue. Is this all right? Yes. Notice one thing down here at the bottom. It's going to go to kernel 4.16.6. It's skipping versions 4.16.4 and 4.16.5, and that's because they were buggy. Is this okay? Why for yes? If you had been using the regular GNOME software update process, you wouldn't be getting all this information. GNOME software is going in the direction of Windows in that respect, but it hasn't gotten that bad yet. Notice it's using SANE backends 1.0.27-17. This is the latest version of the SANE backends. But it's a stable version, not the experimental version that is used in Ubuntu 18.04. Now everything is complete. Let me say that I've done this update four or five times, both in virtual machines and in actual installations on remote hard drives, and each time it becomes more extensive. Uh, if Fedora comes out with an updated ISO image, the updates may be less extensive again, but it could be very different when you actually do it. So I'm going to exit the terminal. I haven't found an invitation to restart. But I'm going to restart anyway to see what happens, to show you what happens. I'm now in version 4.16.6 .6 of the Linux kernel. Now this is a regular login screen. And you notice I have a little gear symbol down here. Now this only gives me two choices, GNOME and GNOME Classic. And that's because I did this entire process in simple graphics mode, which is X or X11. And I don't have any Wayland option here. If you had used the Wayland installation process, it would be different, and I'm going to cover that separately. So now I enter my password. Sign in. This is just a regular session. There's no special user creation or password creation anymore.
This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.